In today's video tutorial we are going to be making a mobile app for Android devices and it's basically a little bio app about ourselves so people can find out a little bit more information about us. In my example today I've got Bob's bio app. I'm just going to run it now so you can see what happens. So we start with this title page which will reveal a background and then the contents. In this app you can click on one of four buttons here to find out more about Bob. So if you click on Fast Facts it's going to take you to a page that tells you a few quick facts about Bob. You can hit the Home button to go back to the contents. You can also find out about his work life, sporting teams that he goes for and his travel plans. Okay, so it's a fairly simple app. A little bit of animation in there and some nice design and layout techniques have been used but overall it's not too hard to make. Okay, so let's pop over to Flash now, or Adobe Animate, whichever version you have, and we'll start making this app. Now we're going to make this app targeted towards Android devices today, so when you create a new document, make sure you choose the Air for Android option. And as soon as you bring it in, or as soon as you load your page, sorry, you need to go up to your magnification box and choose Fit in Window, so you can see your entire stage. And before we get started today, we want to bring a few rulers up onto our page. So go to your view menu first and select rulers. That will just display the rulers around the top and the left sides of your page. And I want you to drag a ruler from the left hand side and just drop it on your page somewhere. What I'm going to need to do then is double click on that ruler and set its position to zero. And that's going to align it right to the edge of the stage. Do the same again, just drag another ruler on and drag it over the other side. Double click on it, and I want you to set its position to 480. That's the exact width of our canvas, so that's going to drop it straight down the right hand side. It's a little bit hard to see there, but if I zoom out you'll see what's going on here. Our next thing we're going to do is we're going to put some rulers across the top and bottom. So up the top now, grab a ruler, drag it down, double click on it, set its position to 0. That puts it running across the top of your stage and at the bottom drag one more ruler on and our stage is 800 pixels in height so set it to 800 for the position and it will put it along the bottom of your stage okay so zooming out you can see what we're doing with our stage at the moment okay we've got rulers all the way around each side next thing we're going to do is bring in a background picture Okay, so rename your layer 1 down the bottom there in your layers box by double clicking on it and selecting, oh sorry, and typing in the word background. Once you've done that, I want you to bring a picture in. So we're going to go to file and import and then import to stage. Press Ctrl R for the shortcut if you want. Now the picture you want to use for your background today is a surfer picture. If surfing's not your thing, by all means go into Google Images and find another picture. Now when you bring this in, just click on your picture once with your black arrow. You can see that it's way too big to fit on our stage, so we're going to need to resize it. It's a little bit fiddly in Flash to get it the right size. So what we're going to do first of all, is after we've clicked on it, go to our properties and look at the width and the height over here. Okay. What we want to change is the height to 800. Now when we do that, you might have noticed that it has deformed the picture. It's squished in the height, but hasn't adjusted the width. So our picture is no longer in proportion, and it looks a bit deformed. So what I'm going to do is undo that. And before I type in 800 here, I'm going to check, we'll just click on this little chain. And that will link the width and the height. So now when I resize my height, and press Enter, you'll notice that the width changes as well to match. That way my picture stays in proportion. And it looks normal. It doesn't look like it's deformed in any way. Now with your picture the right size, just use your arrow keys to nudge it around and get it into a position on the stage. Now if you want the surfer on the stage, put him in between those blue lines. If you don't want the surfer on there, by all means cut him out and just have some of the wave maybe in the sun. Or you can go all the way across and just have some of the wave in your background. But whatever you put between this blue rectangle is going to be your background. Okay, I might put the surfer in mine, so I'll put something like that for my background. Okay. Once you've got your picture in position, I want you to right click on it and choose break apart. And that's just click off it once you do that, and that's going to allow us to edit our picture. Now I think I've zoomed in a little bit far here, so I might just zoom back out to about I'll say 35%. 
What I'm going to do now with my black arrow tool is simply click and drag over the parts of the picture I don't want anymore. So it's the bits outside that blue rectangle. Once you've highlighted that bit, you can simply press delete and it will remove it. Do the same for the other side. Click and drag over the part you don't want all the way up to the ruler and press delete. And then you're left with a background looking something like that. Okay. Once you've got your background looking good, click on it once, go to modify and convert it to a symbol. Now give it a name like background, something meaningful, and you can either choose movie clip or graphic for its type, it doesn't really matter. So click on OK. Alrighty, last thing we're going to do now on this background is click on it once again with our black arrow and what we're going to do is go to our properties panel and look at our filters. In the filters option here, hit the plus sign and choose the blur filter. We're just going to blur this picture out so it doesn't detract from our text that we put over the top of this picture. So we just want to blur it out so it's just a nice bit of colour in the background there. About 20 pixels is what you should be looking for when you blur out your background. It'll be looking something like this once you've got it done. Okay. Um, once you've done the background, we're pretty much done with that layer for the time being. So in your timeline at the bottom, just lock that layer and make a brand new layer. And we're going to call this next layer Blue Box. Now what we're going to do is draw a blue rectangle over the top of the stage here. And it's going to completely cover that picture. We're going to animate it so that it reveals that picture slowly. Okay, so in your toolbox, grab your rectangle tool. Choose a colour that you would like for your background. I'm just going to choose a dark blue and draw a rectangle on your page anywhere. Okay, it doesn't matter what size just yet because we're about to change it. Once you've clicked on that box with your black arrow, I want you to change its X value to 0 and its Y value to 0. That's going to push it up into the top left hand corner. You can then resize it by changing the width and the height. We want the width to be 480. You'll notice that the height changed automatically then as well. So what we're going to have to do is uncheck this chain here. So the layers, oh sorry, the width and the height are no longer linked. And make the height 800. So that's the exact width of our canvas. So when you click off that rectangle, it should be looking something like that. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is click on that um, blue box. Just go up to modify and convert it to a symbol. Leave it as a movie clip and we'll give it the name blue box. Click on OK. Alrighty, so we're going to animate that blue box very shortly. There's just one more layer we want to add in, so I'm going to lock that blue box for the time being and just add one more layer in. And that layer, I'm going to double click on it and call it text. And what I'm going to write with my text tool is Bob's bio app and I'm going to make sure it's a nice light color like white that's going to contrast well with my background. My font I'm going to choose Roboto because that's a font that's specifically designed for Android devices and is easy to read on small screens. And for the style, lots of different styles there but because it's a heading I'm going to choose black. Nice big thick font. And I'll click on my page and I'm just going to write in capital letters Bob's bio app. Now, obviously it doesn't quite fit on the stage, so we're going to have to just drop the size down a bit. Still probably a little bit smaller would be nice. So about size 65 looks like it's going to work for me. Now, to get that positioned perfectly in the center of my stage, what I'm going to do is go across to my Align panel. If you can't see that, go to your Window menu and just select Align. or will press Control k Make sure you check the box at the bottom that says Align to Stage and then horizontally align the center of that text on the page. Then go across to this one here and align the vertical center as well. And that's got our text smack bang in the middle of the page now. Alrighty, so it's time to do our animation now. What we want to happen is we want to have this text and the background just sit on the stage for a short amount of time and then we're going to reveal the background underneath it. So I'm going to start with the text, okay? I'm going to let our text sit there for maybe one or two seconds up to about frame 20. At frame 20 I'm going to start the animation. So at frame 20 on my timeline, I'm still on the text layer, 
I'm going to press F6 to insert a keyframe. You can also right click on there and insert a keyframe if you need to. Okay. Once we've got a keyframe there, we know that's our starting position for our animation. The next thing we need to do is put in our end position. So I'm going to go all the way up to frame 40, up here and press F6. And now I need to move my text to where I want it to end. I know it's hard to see at the moment because I've got the white background and the white text, but I do want that text at the top of the page. So using my arrows, I'm just going to nudge the text up to a position at the top of the page. Okay. Last thing I need to do is between frame 20 and 40, I want Flash to fill in that gap with a classic tween. So I'm going to right click my mouse in between those two keyframes and create a classic tween. And you're not really going to be able to see if that works any good until we put this background back in. So what I'm going to do now is just lock that text layer and go back to my blue box layer. I'm going to get this animation working. Just like the text, we want to sit there until frame 20 doing nothing. So at frame 20, on the blue box layer, press F6. Once you've added this keyframe in on frame 20, I just want you to go up to your toolbox and select the free transform tool, which is just the third tool on your toolbar there. And it's going to bring up some um, points around the outside of our blue box. And if we hide the text layer for a moment, so just hit that little eye, underneath the eye, sorry, hit that little black dot, you can see this white dot in the center of the page. I want you to click on that and pick it up and move it up to the very top, right inside that little square. If you can't see that, I'll zoom in a bit. So that little white dot there needs to be sitting on top of that little square. Okay, That's going to help us resize the blue box in a moment to do a quick animation. So this is the start of our animation. We've got a blue box here. Come across to frame 40 here and press F6 again to insert a keyframe. And now we need to put in our end point for our animation. Okay, so I'm just going to make the text visible again so I can see where it is. And back on my blue box layer at frame 40, I'm going to just resize this blue box somewhere up the top like so. Then I'm going to right click my mouse between those two keyframes because you can see we've got a start point. Then we have a big blue box here and an end point where that box gets a bit smaller and we're going to let Flash do the rest for us. So right click between those keyframes, create a classic tween. Now when we run our animation we should be seeing our page sit there for a moment and then the animation takes place. Okay. What we do want to see in this white area now is our actual background of our surfer. At the moment it's only sitting on frame number one. We want that to stretch all the way out to frame 40. Because there's no animation on this background you just need to insert a blank frame. So press F5, or right click your mouse and just insert a frame. Okay, and there's our background that we made earlier on with the surfer. So starting from the beginning, we should have our first scene looking like this. Okay, that's all we want for our first scene. Okay, so what I'm going to do is grab my black arrow, just lock those three layers. We don't want those to be um, edited anymore. And I'm going to go to my window menu and select the scene panel. Okay, you can see a list of scenes in your scene panel. At the moment, we've only got one scene. We're going to rename that. We're going to call it Splash. It's like a splash screen for our app or the introductory scene. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is make a new. Actually, why not even make a new one? No, actually, yeah, we'll make a new scene. So press that little new button down there. Give it a name and call it Contents. Okay. In the Contents, we're going to copy and paste a few things from the previous splash screen. Okay. First thing is the background layer. So over on your Contents scene, rename Layer 1 to Background. And what we want is that surfer picture in there. So I'm just going to go back to my scenes and click back on the splash. I'm going to unlock the background layer for a moment and just click on it. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to go back to my contents, right click on my page and choose paste in place. And that just pastes our background exactly where it was on the first scene. Okay, so it's keeping a bit of consistency between the first two scenes. Once that's in place, I'm just going to lock it for the minute. 
The other things I want to have on my background there is the title at the top that says Bob's Bio App and that blue box behind it. So I'm going to unlock the text and the blue box for a moment here. And I'm going to click on each of those. I'll just hold shift then to select both of them and I'm going to copy them. Going back into my scenes, I'm going to go to my contents again. I might actually put these on the background layer, so I'm going to unlock the background layer here. Right click my mouse outside the stage somewhere and just choose paste in place. And that puts our heading at the top there. Okay, I'm not going to animate this background at all, that's why I'm putting them all on the same layer. So there shouldn't be an issue at all having them all together. So now I will lock the background layer and that's going to do us for that. Next thing I'm going to do is add another layer in called Photo. And I want you to put a photo of yourself here. Okay. So to do that, just go to File and Import. Import to Stage. Okay, all your photos are here. I'm just going to select my photo and move it up to the center there. Feel free to use your Align tools to try and center that in the middle of the stage. You may also need to use your Transform tool to resize it to a size that you think looks good. So I'm going to start at that size and if I need to make it bigger a bit later on I will. I've got four buttons to fit in down the bottom here though so it could take a little while uh, to get this right. So I'll lock it into place and I'm going to make another new layer. Okay, The first button in my app is called Fast Facts. So I'm going to give it the name Fast Facts. That's what this third layer is going to be called. And I'm going to draw a button on the screen. Now when I draw this button, I'm going to use the rectangle tool and I'm going to leave the stroke off and I'm going to choose choose a color that's going to go well with our app. So I'm going to choose like this um, like a purpley color I think. Maybe one from up here will look a bit better. Just one of the darker purples. Once I've selected my color, I want to go down the bottom to my rectangle options here and I'm going to round the edges out. I'll say about I'll go 20 pixels. Okay, so when we draw our button, it's going to look like a rounded rectangle. Okay, so when you draw it, I'm going to draw it, I'll uh, say roughly about that size at the moment. You want to have a little bit of room on your page for this button to grow, because we're going to do a little bit of animation where it grows a little bit in size. Okay, so that's roughly the size that you want your button to begin with. Um, once you've drawn it on, go up to Modify, Convert it to a Symbol. And we're going to change its type to a button. Then we're going to give it the name. I'll just call this one Fax. And then click OK. And that converts this into a button. Now we're not quite finished editing this button. So what I'm going to do is zoom in a little bit here. And you can see it's got a blue box around it. What I'm going to do with my black arrow is double click on that button. And I'm going to put some text on top of it. I might even make a new layer for this down here. Okay, I'll just call it text. So we're in isolation mode at the moment where we're just editing the button and nothing else. And the text we're going to put in, I'm simply going to say fast facts. And we don't want it to be purple, we're going to have to highlight it and change its color to say white. I might change it from Roboto black to we'll say medium, make it a bit skinnier. I'm going to have to make it a bit smaller too, just so it fits on top of our button. Okay, so just move that around until you're happy with it. I'm just going to nudge it with my arrow keys till it's roughly in the center. Okay, so that's looking good. The other thing I want to do to this button is put a down state on it. So that means when somebody pushes down on this button with their finger, it's going to change color. So the way we do that is come across to our down state here and just press F6 on both layers. Okay, so we've got a keyframe now on our down state. And what we're going to do on layer 1, which is the actual button, we're going to click on it once and change its fill color. Uh, now I'm just going to choose like an orangey, yellowy kind of color there. As long as we can read that text again, it's all good. And when you're done, press the back arrow. And that will take you back and you should be back to your purple button. Okay, so zooming out a little bit now, that's looking pretty good. 
All right. Now one final thing we can add to these buttons to make them look a little bit more realistic or a little bit more 3D is a little bit of a shadow behind them. So I'm just going to zoom in a bit here so we can see this button clearly. Now you need your black arrow and you need to click on your button. And over in your filters here, you've got a few different things you can add. We're going to put a drop shadow behind it. And if you want to play around the settings, by all means go for it. But I think the little shadow we got is not too bad. It might be a little bit dark, so I might just turn the strength down a bit there. I'll move that around. That's looking pretty good. Okay, it just looks a little bit more 3D, if anything, with that shadow behind it. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is make our second button now. And we want to use the same pretty much the same size button, the same font, same colours as what we've got here. So a quick way to do that is go to our library panel at the top, find your fax button inside that library and duplicate it. You can do that by right clicking on it and selecting duplicate. Now it asks for a name for this new button, so the second button we're going to make is called work. And then just click OK. You'll see now you've got a work button in your library. Now we're going to edit this work button so it doesn't have the same text. Okay, so up in the window here, the preview window, just double click on it. And you're going to need to edit that text. So grab your text tool, change where it says fast facts, and write in work. And you're going to need to move that across to roughly the center of that button. Once you've got it in position, just copy that. Go across to your down state over here on the text layer. And you can see it's gone back to fast fax text. So you're going to have to delete that. And just go edit, paste in place. And that puts our text of work back in there. So now when we've got our button just sitting on the page, it's going to look like that. When we push down on it and go to our down state, it will just change color. And our text is all good. So press your back arrow at the top to go back to your mobile app and simply pick up this work button and drag it onto your stage. Actually, don't, before you do that, you'll need to make a new layer. I forgot about that, so just lock fast facts for the minute. Make a new layer called work. Try not to do weird capitals like me. Okay, so once you've got the work layer in, then you can drag that button on. Okay, and nearly stuff that up. And just put that under fast facts. We'll get it lined up a bit neater later on, but you should have your second button on there now. Okay, so while I remember now, I'm going to lock that layer, make another new layer. This time it's going to be called Sport. And I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. Now duplicate one of those buttons, either Work or Fast Facts, it doesn't matter. Just find them in your library, right click and duplicate it. And this button or symbol is going to be called Sport. Click OK. Now with Sport selected, come up to the preview box and double click on it. And you're going to do what you did before. You're going to grab your text tool from your toolbox, highlight the word Work, and in capitals change it to Sport. Using your black arrow and arrow keys, just nudge that around until you get it somewhere in the middle of the button. Copy that text, go across to your down state on your text layer and delete the text that's on there and paste in place the text you just copied. Okay, so there's Sport now on our up and down layer, looking good. So I'll press the back arrow. I'll be able to drag that onto my stage now and just put it underneath the other buttons. And finally, got one more layer to add, just make sure you lock the Sport layer as well. And This final button is called Travel. Oops, done it again. Alright, so with Travel, let's do the same again. Duplicate one of these buttons, give it the name Travel, click OK, double click in the preview box up here, and with your text tool, change the text to say Travel. Use your arrow keys just to nudge it around and get it in the center of that button. Copy that text, go across to your down state now on your text layer and delete the text that's there and then paste in place the text you just copied. So it should say travel. When you're done just check that the up and down states 
have the text in the same spot, I just change color, it's looking good. Go back to your app and drag the travel button onto your travel layer. Okay. One thing you might notice missing is the drop shadow behind each of these buttons. Okay, so you can see the first button up here, Fast Facts, has a drop shadow on it. Let's just click on it for a sec. In our properties, remember in the filters here, you have a drop shadow. So if you want to quickly add that to these other three buttons, I'm not sure if you can do it all at once. Looks like you can though, so let's do that. I'm just going to make sure they're all unlocked down here. And just click on each of these buttons while holding Shift, so you've got these three bottom buttons selected. Then we're going to go to our filters, put in a drop shadow, and make the strength about 73%, which the top one had. So they all should have a little shadow behind them now. That's looking pretty good. The next thing I want to do is get these buttons perfectly aligned and evenly spaced out in my app. So first of all with this travel app, oops, I'll just grab my black arrow, I just want to move it down a little bit more towards the bottom. Same with sport and work, and yeah, fast facts is good. So they're looking a little bit uneven at the moment. So what we need to do is highlight these four buttons. So I'm going to hold shift and click on each four of those buttons. And I'm going to go across to my align option here and make sure align to stage is checked and choose this align horizontal center that will put all the buttons in the middle of the page now there's still a bit of a weird gap between each of them it's not quite an even gap so we need to distribute these buttons evenly so we press this button here distribute vertical center whoops and that's done it to the stage I'd better undo that just uncheck align to stage first and then push that button and that will evenly space out your buttons now. So when you click off and deselect them, you can see your buttons looking pretty good there now. So I've got a little bit of room to just make this picture here of ourselves a little bit bigger as well. So I might just go and unlock my photo layer. Using my free transform tool, I'll just hold shift and give it a bit of a resize. Just nudge it into position. Alright, so that's looking good. Also on this picture here, I'm going to quickly convert that to a symbol, so go to modify and convert to symbol, give it a name like photo, and either have it as a movie clip or a graphic, click OK. I'm going to put a filter on it, Okay, that's why I converted it to a symbol, so the filter I want to put on is a glow. I'm going to make the glow black, and if you just click off it and zoom in there, you can see it's got like a little black border around it now. Alrighty, so it's nothing much, but just something to make it pop out. Okay, if you don't like the glow, you could always try a drop shadow behind it, like the buttons. Maybe that looks better. Actually, I think it does look better. Looks pretty good with both, so I might even leave the glow and the drop shadow on my little photo there. Alright. So the last thing we've got to do is animate these buttons. Okay, we want them to start a little bit smaller than what they are now and make them grow to a slightly bigger size. So what I'm going to do is just select all of these buttons and using my free transform tool I'm just going to hold shift and resize them so they're a little bit smaller. About there will look good. That's how they're going to start and then they're going to appear one by one and just pop up and just slightly grow a little bit larger. The picture up here we also want to animate that we just want that to fade in slowly. Okay so I might do that one first because that's an easy one. What we're going to do is find the photo layer. Frame 1 is our start of our starting point for the animation. I want frame 20 to be the end point for the animation for this little guy. So I'm going to press F6 on frame 20 here to insert a keyframe. That now means I've got a start point and an end point. What I want to happen, I want that photo to fade in. So at the start of my animation, I'm going to click on that photo with my black arrow and I'm just going to close filters there, we don't need that. Color effect is the panel we're looking for. Open color effect and change the alpha to 0%. Okay. The lower that percentage, the more invisible your picture will become. So we want it completely invisible. Then over time, by the time it gets to frame 20, it's going to be completely visible so we can see it again. So I'm just going to right click my mouse between those two keyframes and let flash fill in the gap there with a classic tween. And as I press enter, you'll see my picture fade in. 
Okay, you might have noticed that everything else disappeared by the time we get to frame 20, and that's because everything else is just sitting on frame 1. We haven't stretched them out to frame 20 yet. So it might be an idea to bring out our background at least to frame 20. So our background down here on frame 1, just go across to frame 20 and click in it, and press F5. That puts an empty frame in, but it just stretches our background out now. So our photo fades in, and we've got our background sitting there till frame 20 which is good. Next thing we're going to animate is the fast fax button. What we want the fast fax to do is to slightly grow as we load it up on our page. Okay so frame 1 is our start point for our fast fax button animation. It's going to start at this size. When we get to frame 5 we want it to grow a little bit so I'm going to go across to frame 5 on my fast fax layer. I'm going to insert a keyframe by pressing F6 Using my free transform tool, I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to hold shift and stretch it out very carefully to about that size. Okay, about one notch bigger. Then for the rest of the time, my button's just going to sit there and do nothing. So from frame 5 all the way to frame 20, it's just going to sit there. So on frame 20 on my fast fax button layer, I'm just going to press F5. And that puts in a blank frame at the end there. So the animation occurs between frame 1 and frame 5. So right click your mouse between those two keyframes and make a classic tween. Now it's a very quick one but you should see my button grow. Okay, it's a pretty simple one. I'm going to lock that layer. I might lock the photo layer while I'm at it as well because the animation's finished on that as well. Next I'm going to go to the work button. Okay, at the moment this is how our work button is looking. I want that to appear as the fast fax animation finishes. So what I'm going to need to do with my black arrow selected is click once on frame 1 of that work button layer. Then I'm going to click and drag it up to frame number 5. So that little black dot now is on frame 5 and that means our button is appearing for the first time at frame 5 now. If I go back to frame 1 you'll see that it's not there anymore. That's fine. So frame 5 is the start of our animation, frame 10 is going to be the end of our animation for this button. So press F6 and insert a keyframe on frame 10. So now that we've got our start point and our end point for our animation on the work button, let's make that animation occur. Go back to frame number 5 on the work button, go and select your free transform tool. Now I've just noticed a little issue I need to resolve here, you can see this little white dot is in the left hand corner of my button. I actually want to pick that up and move it into the center of my button. I'll need to do that at frame 10 as well. So at frame 10, just pick up that white dot and move it into the center of the button. Okay. So frame 5 doesn't need to be touched anymore. At frame 10, you need to resize it. Just drag it out a little bit so it's the same size, or very close to the same size as fast fax button. That's pretty close. Uh, might be a little bit too big. I might just see if I can make it a touch smaller. That looks a bit better. Okay, so between those two keyframes, between frame 5 and 10, right click your mouse, put a classic tween in, and you should see your button grow. Okay, remember for the last 10 frames here, nothing's going to happen. So go to frame 20 of your work layer and press F5. That puts in a blank frame and that lets your button just sit there for the remainder of the animation. So I'll quickly test that now. That looks good. I'm going to lock the work layer now, go up to my sport button layer, and on frame one, you can see the sport button. I might have to just um, scroll that down a bit here and have a look. Alright, so I'm going to grab my black arrow first of all. I want the sports button to appear after the fast facts and after the work button uh, buttons appear. So I'm going to click once on that black dot, and then I'm going to go click again and drag it up to frame number 10. So the sports button is appearing for the first time at frame 10. Now we want the little animation to occur between frame 10 and frame 15. So at frame 15, press F6, go up to your tools and select your free transform tool here. Now we've got the same issue with this little white dot. It needs to be in the center of the box here. 
Yours might already be in the centre, but if it's not, make sure you're doing this now. You want to have that white dot in the centre of the box so it's easy to resize. Okay, so our animation for our sports button. At frame 10, it sits there, does nothing, starts nice and small. By the time it gets to frame 15, we want our button a bit bigger. So try and make it the same size as the fa uh, facts and the work button. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. When you're happy with it, in between those two dots somewhere, right click your mouse and create a classic tween. Let's have a quick, oh, don't forget, just at the last bit here, all the way at the frame 20, there's nothing happening, so click on frame 20 of the sport button layer and press F5. Just makes an animation. Sit there and do nothing. So let's have a look at that third button. Seems to be working well. So finally, we've got the travel button. And we don't want that to appear until it gets to frame 15 after the other three buttons have appeared on the screen. So drag that little keyframe from frame 1 up to frame 15. So your travel button starts appearing then. And we want its animation to finish by the time it gets to frame 20. So press F6. Grab your free transform tool now and like before, move that little white dot into the centre of the button. It should snap into place once you hover around the centre. Okay, with that little white dot in place now on both keyframes, you can go across to frame 20 and resize your button. So hold shift, resize it so it's the same size as the other buttons, and then right click your mouse between the two keyframes to create a classic tween. Alright, so that should be it for our buttons. Let's have a look. I'm going to click back on frame 1 and press enter. Looks like everything's working well, just like we had planned. Um, the last thing I'm going to do for this video before I end it is make one last layer here, right at the top, and I'm going to call it Actions. What I want to happen when I run this um, animation or app, I want it to stop once the animations are played through. So when I press Enter, I want my app to stop at that point. Okay, so what I'm going to do at frame 20 on this Actions layer, I'm going to press F6 and I'm going to put in a little bit of code, or a little bit of action script. That's why I called it Actions. So the way we do that is we go up to our Window menu, and there's a few ways you can do it. I'm just going to go to Actions, and that brings up the box where I can do some coding. I'm just going to write in the word Stop in lowercase letters. I'm going to open up a bracket, close a bracket, and then do a semicolon. And that little piece of code there is going to make our app stop when it hits frame 20. If you just click off frame 20 now, you'll see a little white A appearing at frame 20, and that means there's some code or some action script on that very last frame. Okay, so that is it for this video. We've made our splash screen, which animates and looks something like that. Immediately, immediately it will carry on and go to the contents page, which will animate like that. Alrighty. So that's all we're going to do in this part of the video. In the next part of the video, we'll make the final four scenes and link them all together using these buttons. Okay, so you will need to save that up. I'm just going to save it um, in the appropriate folder. I'll call it part one. You can call it something like you can call it something like bio app. Actually, it's probably a better name. I'll give it a name bio app instead of example. Alright, so I've called a bio app, it should be an FLA document, press save, and I'll see you in the second part of the video.